Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honourable Keith Mitchell announced changes to COVID regulations effective October 5th. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. With the details to the news for Tuesday, October 5th, I am Rikisha St. Louis. Prime Minister and Minister for National Security Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell has announced several changes to Grenada's COVID-19 regulations. The nightly curfew will remain in effect, but with an adjustment in time from 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. The no-movement weekends intended to help curb the spread of the virus have been discontinued. The Prime Minister explained that according to health experts, and I quote, we must learn to live with COVID-19. Therefore, it is imperative that we seek to resume a degree of normalcy while continuing to safeguard our people, unquote. Dining services at restaurants will resume for fully vaccinated persons only, and beach access has been extended, the new time being 4 a.m. to 4 p.m. Dr. Mitchell announced the reopening of retail stores across the country, but he encouraged store managers to maintain 50% capacity and ensure that employees and customers are adhering to the recommended protocols. Gyms and fitness centers are also permitted to resume operation. Likewise, daycare centers and businesses in the beauty sector including hairdresser saloons and barber shops. However, there is one caveat, which is based on consultation with representatives in the private sector to help facilitate continuity of operations, having consulted also with stakeholders in the following industries and acting on the general recommendation Employees in the food service, accommodation, fitness, beauty, child and elder, elderly care sectors must be fully vaccinated or in cases where they have received only one dose, the second dose must be administered within specific period after the resumption of operations. Given the fluidity of the pandemic and the need for flexibility and agility in responding and adapting to its impact, government is continuously engaged in consultation with stakeholders as it seeks to balance the protection of lives and livelihoods. On the subject of vaccination, the Prime Minister noted the ongoing increase with the total number of fully vaccinated Grenadians now exceeding 25,000. However, he said Grenada is still a long way from where it needs to be in terms of achieving herd immunity. The government of Grenada has announced that retail stores and other businesses will be allowed to open as part of new regulations and as it seeks to con a continued balance between safeguarding lives and protecting livelihoods. However, owners and operators of these businesses must ensure that measures are implemented to allow for the strict adherence to COVID-19 protocols. During Tuesday's post-cabinet briefing, Attorney General Dia Forrester expounded on the changes to the regulations following the announcement by Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell. She said the mandate of government is to permit and promote purposeful movement movement to ensure control over the spread of the virus. Ms. Forrester added that individuals with existing approvals from previous regulations are not required to obtain new ones since provisions have been made for their validity going forward. Notwithstanding that between 4 a.m. to 7 p.m. daily, individuals are allowed to move around, we continue to request that people restrict their movement to that which is necessary. In other words, we must be purposeful when leaving our homes, and that purpose must be for conducting legitimate business as they continues to be a general prohibition on social activities and large gatherings. That maintains as the general framework of the COVID-19 regulations. There are additional businesses that will now be allowed to be opened 
which includes your retail stores from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m., gyms and fitness centers from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m., businesses and establishments in the beautification industry across the board from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. by appointment only. That includes hairdressers, barbers, spas, nail technicians, and such other types of businesses. Professional offices will be opened on an appointment-only basis. Daycare centers can now open between 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. Government is making an appeal to businesses to ensure strict compliance to the protocols in place, including the maintenance of no more than 50% capacity during operation hours. Businesses continue to be required to follow the physical distancing and safety protocols. That is, your businesses must have the six feet markers in place. The patrons must wear a face mask covering the nose, mouth, and chin. Customers must sanitize hands on entry. Businesses must keep proper legible records of names, telephone numbers, and businesses, and address, sorry, addresses of people entering their businesses. Also, generally, as the Prime Minister indicated, we suggest that the safest option for businesses is to ensure that at no time you have no more than 50% capacity in your establishment. The government has noticed the overcrowding of some businesses in the last two weeks, and we urge those businesses to get back in line with the regulations. Continuing the news, Cabinet has approved a significant reduction in the cost of PCR tests for visitors and locals traveling to Grenada. During the weekly post-Cabinet press briefing on Tuesday, Minister for Tourism and Civil Aviation, Honorable Clarice Modest Kerwin, said the test will now cost roughly EC $135 down from EC $400. Since the outbreak of COVID-19 in 2020, Grenada, along with several countries, has made it mandatory that a negative PCR test must be presented upon entry. According to Minister Modest Kerwin, government has heard the cries of the people and now they will pay less for the test. For one individual, it is not too bad. But when you have a family, it, it, it becomes quite a burden and we have looked at what other islands are doing and we're saying if they can do it and they can succeed um in what the the objective we think we can do it too so like everything else we're going gradual so um the we i am announcing now that cabinet has approved a reduction in the pcr test which was 105 somewhere there a reduction to less than half it will now be 50 dollars the original fee was um and i have it here it was 150 us which amounted to 405 ec so now the proposed fee is 50 us which amounts to 135 ec so it's it's about 33 percent one third of the the original fee the ministry of health is currently finalizing the process with the ministry of finance following which an announcement will be made as to when this will take effect this is the national report the news will continue after the break government private sector civil society academia farmers the Ministry of Agriculture, Lands and Forestry, in collaboration with the Food and Agriculture Organization, invites you to World Food Day 2021, the virtual edition, under the theme, Our Actions Are Our Future, Better Production, Better Nutrition, A Better Environment and A Better Life. Join us October 15 from 9.30 a.m. via Zoom, Facebook, GIS and Real FM as we recognize and celebrate the many successes of the agriculture sector. Welcome back. Minister for Tourism and Civil Aviation, Dr. Clarice Modest Kerwin, says Grenada will welcome new flights from the United States via American Airlines from November 1st. In addition to this, flights will resume from Charlotte beginning November 27th. The minister shared the good news that can transform the sector on Tuesday. Hotels and guest houses were forced to close their doors and send workers home due to the low visitor arrival rate and the rapid spread of the virus we are expecting some new flights um, 
from American Airlines from November the 1st, so in less than a month. They'll be adding Friday. Now they do um, Wednesday and Saturday, so it'll be coming in Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. The Charlotte route, uh, uh, Grenadians re recall that they had added a, a Charlotte route, and we expect them to resume those operations from November 27th. In January, Grenada welcomed 1,609 persons from Miami. Since then, the numbers have increased to more than 7,000. Discussions continue regarding daily flights from Miami. Minister Modest Cohen also announced the possibility for the arrival of cruise lines before year end. A few months ago, it was too early for us. Uh, we didn't have the level of vaccination um, in our country, the levels that we thought would give us that. Certainly we were nowhere near herd immunity and we weren't close enough to give us that comfort. We are hoping that we will get the support um, of persons in the industry and outside of the industry because the level doesn't respect whether you're in the industry or not to increase that, that um, the level of vaccination to decrease, decrease the infection rate and all of these things um, to the point where we can feel confident that they can come in. Finally, in the news, Attorney General Dia Forrester says under government's new regulations, some businesses will be required to present their vaccination status. This is part of government's mandate to ensure the safety and protection of lives and livelihoods. For businesses offering dining services, patrons are required to present their vaccination card to be able to dine in. However, this does not extend to takeaway and drive through services, which will continue despite a vaccination status. The Attorney General spoke to other businesses that will be required to provide a vaccination status. All businesses where health permits or food handler certificates are required, employers must present the vaccination status of their employees to be able to open or reopen their businesses. Employees must present their vaccination status to be able to discharge their duties at those businesses. The businesses in question include restaurants, hotels, guest houses, bars, and those in the beautification industry, so your barbers, your hairdressers, your spas, and such other businesses with that requirement. Secondly, residential care establishments or facilities, including elderly nursing homes, also have the requirement for the vaccination of all individuals working and living there to present their vaccination status, to be able to offer the service or to continue to reside there. Thirdly, daycare centers also have the requirement to present the vaccination status of individuals working there. Likewise, to be able to open or to be able to discharge duties at that business as an employee. There is a further requirement for daycare centers, that is individuals dropping off and picking up infants must also present their vaccination status to be able to attend or access the daycare centers. The Attorney General said employees with at least one dose of either vaccines will be permitted to work. However, they have a fixed time period to present proof of the second dose. She explained this is not yet applicable to frontline healthcare workers. Government is working on advocacy to get better vaccination rates within the health sector. In relation to frontline healthcare workers, the government is extending steady advocacy on that matter to get better uptakes. And whilst that is done, the government must balance the reality of whether there will be sufficient workers to provide essential healthcare services and or a regulatory framework that reduces that capacity. Healthcare services are an essential business that must be open, the closure of which puts lives in danger versus restaurants and bars and such businesses which are more optional in nature but want to operate within that framework to continue doing business in a safer manner. Grenada began administering the AstraZeneca vaccine in February 2021. Since then, over 60,000 vaccines have been administered, 25,000 Grenadians are now fully vaccinated, and over 9,000 have received the first dose. Two vaccines are now available in two Grenadians, AstraZeneca and Pfizer. That story just ended the national report for Tuesday, October 5th, recapping the top story. 
Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honourable Keith Mitchell announced changes to COVID regulations effective October 5th. On behalf of the entire news and production team, I am Rakesha St. Louis saying thank you for joining us. Until next time.